When foresters use variable radius sampling, they often use a tool called a prism to determine which trees to measure. So a prism is simply a glass prism, a wedge of glass that is uh, ground to very specific specifications, and it, reflac or sorry, it refracts the light in a, a set way. And so if I stand, if I'm at my plot center, and I hold the prism above the plot center, and I look around, as I look through the prism, the prism, my view through the prism is shifted a little bit from my view uh, from around the prism. And uh, the cool thing about a prism is I just kind of keep sweeping around, and I watch the portion of a tree trunk through the prism that gets shifted over. And if the portion of the tree trunk gets shifted over just a little bit, such that it appears to be touching the part of the tree trunk that is not shifted, then I count that tree as in. And if I were doing variable radius sampling, then I would go measure that tree. I would measure the dBH and the height of that tree, and I would count that tree as one that was in the plot. If we're not necessarily thinking about variable radius sampling, though, the other cool thing about a prism is that we can use this to get a good estimate of basal area. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stand with my prism over my plot center, and I'm going to circle around very carefully looking at my different fields of view. And every time I see a tree trunk, I'm going to look at the portion of the tree trunk in the prism that's shifted over. And if that portion is touching the portion of the tree trunk that isn't shifted and isn't refracted, I'm just going to count that tree as in. And when I'm done, I'm going to tally up the number of trees that I counted as in. And uh, each prism has a something called a basal area factor, or BAF. In this case, the, vari variable, the basal area factor of this prism is 10. So that means that every tree that is in represents 10 square meters per hectare of basal area. So if I have seven trees that are in, for example, then I would know that at this plot center, we would have about 70 square meters per hectare of basal area. And with how the prism is, is designed, a very large tree can be quite far away from you and still be in, whereas a smaller tree has to be much closer to be in. And if you find trees that are on the borderline, uh, some people will say you count every other borderline tree. So the first one you say, okay, it's borderline. I'm not going to count it. The next one that's borderline, you do count it. If you're trying to be a bit more precise, what you want to do is actually measure those trees. You're going to measure the dBH of that tree, and you're going to measure the distance of the tree to plot center and look it up on a table. Because whether a tree is in or not is based on the ratio of the diameter of the tree to the distance from plot center. Let's look at this tree. This is a pretty big tree and I'm relatively close to it. So watch through the prism as I slide the prism across. There, do you see how the prism has shifted the trunk of that tree to the right? Do you see that when we're looking through the prism, the trunk of the tree has gone to the right. But the shifted part of the trunk still touches the non-shifted part of the trunk. So let me see if I can point to this. The shifted part of the trunk that's in the prism is touching the non-shifted part of the trunk. So this tree is definitely in. And I would expect that because it's a very big tree and I'm relatively close to it. I'm not being so precise right now because I'm just trying to show you how the prism works. But remember that as you use the prism, you should be measuring the tree at breast height or pointing your prism at breast height. So let's look at this western red cedar here. I'll bring the prism in from the side. So there you see the shifting of the trunk. But once again, the, the trunk is shifted to the right, but it's still clearly overlapping the, the non-shifted view of the trunk. So this tree is definitely in. Let's look at this western hemlock. It's a bit farther away and smaller in diameter. So I'll slide the prism into place. There, do you see the shifted trunk of the prism? You can see it pretty clearly, but let me get my, there we go. So there's the real trunk. Here's the shifted view from the prism. And see, they definitely don't overlap. So this tree is clearly out. I would not count this tree as in. Here's a small red alder, and you probably can't tell because I don't have anything in there for a scale, but this tree is probably about 15 centimeters in diameter, and it's only maybe a meter and a half away from me, so it's quite close. So for a small tree to be in, it has to be quite close to you. Let's look through the prism. There, and I'm gonna say that I'm putting the top of the prism at breast height, so I'm looking, so I'm comparing, 
kind of right at this, at the top edge of the prism. And I would call this a borderline tree. So it's not totally clear to me whether the, the shifted view of the tree trunk overlaps with the non-shifted view or not. So for this reason, I would consider this a borderline tree. So I'm going to measure the distance from the tree to plot center, and I'm going to measure the dBH. Then I'm gonna look it up at a table for basal area factor 10 to precisely determine whether this tree is in or out. And one thing to note, maybe I'll sneak in here so you can see, when you measure the distance from plot center, when you measure the distance from the plot center to the tree, you don't measure to the edge of the tree, you measure to the center of the tree. And this is really important because if you don't do this, you're going to bias your results. Because you can imagine a bigger tree is, let's say that we have two seedlings that are both growing the same distance from plot center, but one of them is very fast growing, so it becomes larger more quickly. It would more, if we were measuring just to the tree, it would have grown into the plot center while the other tree would not have, or sorry, it would have grown in to being within the threshold to being counted while the slower growing tree would not have. So we'd be biasing our sample a little bit. So if, if you don't quite understand that reasoning, that's fine. The important part is you don't measure it just to the edge of the tree. Otherwise, we're biasing it to be more likely to include big trees than small trees. So you take your tape measure and measure it to the center of the tree in order to get that distance from plot center. The trees that I've shown to you so far were pretty simple ones because they were standing by themselves and they were on a roadside, so they were very easy to see. But you'll often run into a situation like this in front of you where you've got a couple of trees, similar sizes and the same species. So they can be kind of hard to keep track of. This is especially an issue if you're in a really young stand. So I'm just going to put the prism up for just a second. Okay, what do you think? Which of those trees is in? If you said all of them, that's not correct. If you said none of them, that's a good guess, but it might be hard to tell for sure. And if you said you're not sure, that's probably the best answer. So let me come in here very deliberately from the side. So let's look at that first tree. Okay, so that one shifts pretty far over. So that tree on the left is definitely not in. And what's, but what's funny is that the shifted trunk lines up with the next tree. So it makes it pretty challenging. So I'm gonna look at I'm gonna look kind of at those little light spots on that tree, those little uh, branch stubs to help me figure out where that tree gets shifted to. So that second tree, that second tree is getting shifted all the way over to the next tree over. So while it looks like those trees are overlapping in the prism, they're basically just getting shifted one tree over. So this first tree is not in, this second tree is not in. Let's look at that third tree, see where that gets shifted to. So that third tree gets shifted to about there. So that third tree is also not in. And let's look at that fourth tree. That fourth tree also gets shifted well past the trunk. So none of those four trees are in, but if you just look through the prism, it can be pretty confusing because they all have overlap with other trees. So my point here is when you have trees closely grouped together, you can't be quick and sloppy. You have to be really careful to make sure that the tree trunk that you're seeing through the prism is the tree that you're interested in.